So this is a sequence of this garden space from May through the following July, an annual cycle. And what you're going to see in the beginning of the video is you're going to see the spring weeds. And in that particular picture on the top left, you can see my broad hoe and quack grass. So there's quack grass in my garden space, and I'm going to plant beans into that space. And you can see on my right hand side, there are the beans. They're doing quite nicely. This is before the deer and the moose showed up and started eating my beans. The deer I was able to keep out of the garden, but the moose just was a little bit more than I could handle. You'll see that I had to harvest my beans a little earlier than I wanted to. Then you're gonna see me knock all that down, and then you're gonna see me add some minerals, homemade mineral amendments, and then you're gonna see me plant garlic in the fall. And so that'll move us down to the bottom in the center where I've planted my garlic. And when I plant my garlic, I'm going to add minerals again. I'm going to add biology. I'm going to add compost. I'm going to add all the things that we talk about. And then I'm going to cover it with crushed leaves in October, November timeframe. And you know that that garlic is all set until the following July. See if you can identify, first of all, the annual garden growing strategy of never leaving the garden bare. That will be prominent. The next thing is the addition of minerals based on soil tests. And that's the macro minerals, the rock dusts and shells and things like that. And then also the micro minerals. How am I going to add them using the fermented plant use and vinegar extraction? And then adding carbon, not only in the guise of the cover crop that starts off in the early spring, but also the rows that I'm going to be creating of all the organic matter, nothing leaving the garden. And then finally, the mulch that I'm putting putting on top of the garlic and also the stinging nettle that I'm going to be putting on top of the beans and the effects of the stinging nettle. Also, I'm going to be adding biology in the form of IMO4. And then you're going to also see the humus and exchange capacity accumulate. There's going to be a, a, a comparison of the soil when I plant the beans compared to when I plant the garlic. And the difference is really pretty incredible. And then there's also nitrogen incorporation. So nothing leaves the garden. Here is me when I'm going to be actually pulling up the quack grass in the spring and then making these rows of the debris between the bean rows. You're also going to see me using nettle to mulch the beans and the amazing effect that that had with the rain that occurred at the same time. I'm going to show you adding fermented plant juice and vinegar extractions after I knock down the beans before I plant the, the garlic you're going to see the difference in the soil from July to October when I planted the beans and I planted the, uh, the garlic. And then you're going to see me adding oyster shells and shrimp shells and rock dusts and IMO and compost when I plant my garlic in that spot. There's also nitrogen fixing going on as a result of the beans fixing nitrogen and all the nodules on the root hairs. There's the uh, carbon to nitrogen ratio that I'm constantly aware of. And that's why I'm using the leaves that give me that 30 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. And you're going to also see the change in the tilth of the soil as these processes go forward. Let's watch this video now. In this photo, you can see that two rows of beans have recently been planted on the left. On the right was the first row a couple of weeks earlier. You can see that the first row has two sets of plantings because of rabbit pressure. In the foreground, new beans were planted. In the background, the beans that the rabbits didn't get. Normally I don't have rabbit pressure because there's so much food around the yard, but the tasty little new beans are too much for the rabbit. Also note between the rows, the weeds that are growing there. On the right hand side between the leeks and the beans there's a good healthy row of weeds and between the first row of beans and the second row of beans I let some weeds grow there. Nettle, mullen. We'll use the mullen as a reference point throughout the video. Also notice the mulch pile between the rows. This is a very important part of my planting. Nothing leaves the garden. And then on the left hand side you can see what looks like essentially grass. It's quack grass primarily. And that's where I'm going to be planting my next row of beans. Uh, you can see this is pretty well grass and weeds. There's nettle in here, sorrels, some chives. This is the third time this has been weed whacked. So this has been my cover crop for the entire spring. 
and I've planted these areas as I've gone along. And um, you can see it's pretty easy to move the top layer of, of grass. And I'm using this broad hoe, and what I'm doing is just chiseling off the top layer and getting rid of the, the green surface. And this broad hoe makes short work of that top surface. And I'm making my between the row compost pile. This heart shaped hoe does a really good job at getting through this soil. This is soil is very hard. I've got everything cleaned up pretty nicely. Now I'll add some minerals, gypsum, basalt. IMO4 and compost. I try and pick the best beans. Sometimes I plant across, diagonally. So I'm going to mulch with stinging nettle. So here's a nice bunch of stinging nettle and we'll use this for mulch. I just take the stinging nettle and strip it. We know nettle to be mineral rich, so this mulch, once it breaks down, will feed the beans. I put the mulch down yesterday, and it rained last night. And you can see the nettle has changed color, and the rain has soaked all of the biology and uh, life on the leaf of the nettle right into the ground. And we'll see how they look tomorrow. So the deer have been in with the beans. Second night, taking out a little bit of these three rows. So I'm gonna try and put up a, a fence to deter them. So the fencing has done well to keep the deer out of the beans. They're coming along nicely. And uh, even the places where it chewed, you can see the beans are doing pretty well. So the deer and the moose have put a good hit on the beans, uh, so I'm going to start harvesting. And I, I've done one row, gotten a fair, fair bit of beans in there. Um, this is the kind of thing I got. Pretty good plant, there's a fair number of beans on there, and I'm just going to pull these, and then we'll dry them off uh, in time. Looks like a pretty good harvest all in all. I wanted to leave them on the vine so they were really dry like this, uh, so you can just clean them very easily. Um, but the deer pressure is just too significant. Never mind the moose. So this is what's left. I've removed the fence and now I'm going to uh, knock all this down with a string trimmer. Then I'm going to water it with uh, mineral amendments and then I'm going to plant garlic in this space. I got a nice mulch. Next we'll add some minerals. And there's some trace minerals, mostly fermented plant juices and vinegar extractions. So this is an example of the soil where the beans were planted. The soil is really, really nice and loose. And the plants that are growing here are things like this. This is, uh, this is garlic um, where I'm planting. That's stinging nettle and see how the runners just come up. And all of this residual carbon I'm just pulling. These are the old beans and that'll make uh, this mulch pile over here on this side. And so you can see, look at that soil, look at the crumb in that soil. It's ready for planting. So I'm just going to go through and essentially clean up the bed by moving the chafe, pulling the nettle up. Uh, those lovely nettles. Stinging nettle root structure is great. It sends out these long runners that nurture the soil. They just spread out and all these little nodes are nurturing the soil. Uh, it's one of my favorite weeds in the garden. This row has minerals on them. Shrimp powder, oyster shell powder, basalt rock dust, gypsum, IMO4. I will be covering this with some compost and then leaves 
But for now, I'm going to start on the next row. And I'm going to leave a generous path between the rows. So I keep all the residual material. I don't want anything to leave this garden space. This was all grown here, and it's great carbon uh, for mulch. Anything I dig up stays in the garden. This provides housing for the biology, food. It'll break down into humus, um, and it's part of a, a strategy of, of improving the soil year after year. And the soil's got great crumb. It smells delightful, and it's nice and rich and black. And there's worms in here as well. So this soil is really coming along. Look at these beautiful cloves. They're just huge. Gorgeous seed garlic. Next row about six inches off the first. Next, we'll put some minerals down. Shrimp shells. Oyster shells. Gypsum. Basalt with manganese and highly paramagnetic. IMO4. Minerals have been added. And compost. Two thousand twenty two, October thirty first, four hundred and thirty five bulbs of garlic in. Just have to put compost on this last row and leaves on top, and I'm done. <laughs>